Welcome to the tutorial Drawing Basics. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a general overview of how to draw in the software, going into further details in later tutorials. So when drawing in the software, the two tools you'll probably use most often is firstly the brush tool, which you can access by using the keyboard shortcut Option B in Mac and Alt B in Windows. And with this tool, you can make really nice thin to thick lines if you have a Wacom or graphic tablet to draw with. Otherwise, you might consider using the Polyline tool, which is hidden under the Line tool. Um, its keyboard shortcut is Alt-P uh, in Windows and Option-P in Mac. The Polyline tool is very much like the Pen tool in some softwares that you might be familiar with, such as Illustrator and After Effects, and behaves in a very similar way. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Option A to bring up the Contour Editor tool. And as you can see, if we zoom in a little here, is that uh, this line has what we call a central vector line. And this means that the width on either side of the central vector is even, and that the width of the line in, in general is consistent all the way around. You can't make a taper um, with this line. It's going to always look very mechanical. It's going to look very even, but some people really, really like this clean aesthetic. Whereas with the brush tool, uh, the stroke that you make actually has what we call a vector contour. And this means that you can change the width of the stroke at any point. It's thicks and thins. You can taper it by adjusting uh, this vector contour. And once again, um, you should choose whichever style or whichever tool you feel will give you the aesthetic that you most desire. So it's really a question of, of style and aesthetic. Let's get rid of that. Um, so you may have noticed that as I was toggling between uh, the brush tool and any of the central vector line tools listed here, also the pencil tool, um, that the properties change in the tool properties panel depending on which tool is selected. Um, and this lets you know that you can make adjustments to the selected tool in this tool properties panel. And though I think it goes without saying, um, if you select a different color in the color panel here, you can start to paint or draw um, in that color. So let's get rid of that as well. So the next thing I'd like to talk to you about is the difference between the camera and drawing views. Let's say that you're in the middle of your animation and a character that you modeled and colored in the center of your camera view is now somewhere else on the stage. Um, let's say you've uh, you know, applied a bunch of transformations. It's smaller now. If it's a cutout, uh, you might have moved its arms and legs a bit. And then you added a bunch of camera moves on top of all of that. Well, all of these uh, transformations, as we call them, would exist as keyframes in your timeline. Um, then all of a sudden, you might decide that you'd like to make a modification to the original drawing. Well, this is going to be very difficult because now your character looks very different from the way it did when you first um, modeled it in the camera view. Well, this is what's great about the drawing view is because here you can see your character as it is without any of these transformations applied. So that's basically the difference between the camera and drawing view. The camera view used for animating uh, with keyframe transformations and camera moves the drawing view will retain the drawing as it originally was without any of these transformations applied. The thing is though now, there are so many users that are used to using single stage softwares where all the sketching, modeling, and inking and painting of their backgrounds and characters are done in the same area where the animating is done that this concept can be somewhat confusing. So. For them, I'll let you know that pretty much everything that you can do in the drawing view, you can do in the camera view as well, but I'm going to go over the differences anyway to let you know how important both views can be. So I'm going to do this by going into the drawing view and then by creating a new drawing layer, which I'm going to rename as figure, and this one will rename as background. And in the background layer, I'm going to quickly draw a background. Just to let you know, you can uh, create some relatively straight lines 
by holding shift even with the brush tool. And you can use option command on Mac to rotate the animation disk slightly to get a nicer tilt when you draw. Um, on Windows, that's control alt. So I'm going to draw a sun and maybe some grass and shift M to reset the view. Uh, don't worry about any of this color stuff that I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm going to go over it in another tutorial, so don't worry about it too much right now. Then on the figure lane, I'm going to quickly draw uh, a stick figure. Paint him red for, so he sort of stands out visually. Okay. So, as you can see in the drawing view, you can only see the drawings on a given layer um, if that layer is selected. Whereas in the camera view, you can see both or all layers in the timeline uh, all together, composited together, the way that you would if you rendered your final animation. Uh, in the camera view, you usually see all your layers in full color unless you're using one of the drawing tools such as the paintbrush, uh, the paint bucket, um, and then you would see all the layers that were not selected in sort of these washed out colors um, and the one selected layer in full color giving you a visual indication of which layer you're working on. In the drawing view, you can accomplish a, a similar look by clicking on the light bulb here which enables the light table and this sort of simulates a real-life situation whereas if you had two sheets of paper with uh, two drawings on it uh, you would see the one underneath in sort of these diffuse tones uh, whereas you would see the one on top sort of in these crisper sharper colors um, as well if you select a layer lower in the stack you will not see what's on top it's almost like you remove that sheet of paper but you will see what's what's selected and if there are other layers underneath you would see whatever is under this layer in the drawing stack. Um, as you might have noticed there's a set of eyes here. Um, in the drawing view this is not so important when you uncheck uh, these uh, these boxes here because you can still preview what's um, on a given frame like what drawings in a given frame by clicking on that frame in the right side of the timeline view um, whereas in the camera view, this is actually very important because if these boxes are not checked, you will not be able to see the content of a given layer um, no matter where you, where you click in the timeline view. Um, but this also makes a lot of sense because if you're uh, working on an animation you decide that uh, you don't want to render a certain element in your final animation, you can always uncheck it and it will not appear. Also, as you're working, you can also take that out of the equation. Um, you can also have the option of locking a layer by clicking on the small lock here. And as you see, the title of the layer goes uh, into red, which lets you know that you might not accidentally uh, draw or modify this layer below. So now let's talk about the various modes. Um, the modes can be seen here in the camera view and here in the drawing view. There are the overlay art layer and the underlay art layer and the line art layer and the color art layer. Uh, this fifth icon here is actually the way that you preview your line and color art and by default these two are previewed together when this icon is depressed. Uh, when it's not you, it's whichever of the four that you select is what you'll see. And you can use this drop down to add the overlay and underlay to the preview so that when you depress this icon, you'll be able to see what's on all four layers. So as you may have noticed, I keep referring to these modes as layers, and that's because a good way of thinking about these modes is like having four separate layers for every layer that exists in the timeline view. 
You probably won't use the overlay or underlay layers at all unless you're doing advanced animation, but I'm just going to touch upon them to let you know what they're good for. The overlay art layer is a good place to put elements that belongs to your character but that you would like to manipulate separate from your character, such as a pair of glasses with transparent lenses. The underlay layer is a good place to put a color mat or shading um, for line art that you've created in which you'd like to do a quick line test, but this is going to be touched upon later in one of the coloring tutorials. What we're really concerned about are the line and color art layers. So as you may have guessed, the line art layer is a good place to put the clean black lines of a character or element that you have created. So I'm just going to quickly draw kind of a funky star here. So then you might decide that you would like to have more flexibility with the fill of this object. So instead of filling the star directly on the line art layer, what you could do is select it and then click on this button here at the top that creates color art from line art. And then if we go to the color art layer and turn off the preview, it looks like there's nothing there. But then if you hit the keyboard shortcut D, we'll see that indeed invisible lines were created. So we can fill that quickly. And then toggle back and forth between the two to see the line and color art. Then if you hit on the preview button, and then hit Control D to get rid of the invisible lines, you'll be able to see the two, the color and line art together. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is viewing your final lines. And by final lines, I mean the lines that you would see when you render this object into a movie. So right now, if we zoom in, you can see that there are a lot of jagged steps along the outside and inside of the star. Um, this is because we are in what we call OpenGL mode. I'm going to go to the camera view so you can actually see the, the mode here, OpenGL. And uh, what that does is it lets us work really, really fast in this view because uh, this vector object is resolution free, you can scale it, you can work around, but as a result we don't see that nice anti-aliasing, the smoothing and the blending of pixels that you get uh, between hard edge colors like this. So if we want to view this as we draw, we just have to go to the menu at the top um, and go to preferences, obviously once again in a PC that's edit preferences, and then go to the open GL tab here. And then under real-time anti-aliasing, you just have to select Enable um, and then hit Enter. If you want to know more about full scene anti-aliasing, it's something, once again, I suggest that you look um, in the user guide about. So now if, you, if we zoom in, you can see that there's some blending happening here, some, some gray uh, grayscale pixels between the hard black and yellow that's giving a softness uh, to the lines um, even as you draw. But the, the consequence to working in a mode like this is that it makes it somewhat slower because although these remain as um, vector-based lines, um, they're being rendered in a bitmap or pixelated mode. Uh, so that's it for drawing basics. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Drawing with the Brush Tool.